Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Once again, my partner creates a meld, a merge, where he steps aside. And in the stepping aside, an energy is created within himself and also an energy is created with the intent of those who would listen. This is the true meld that we speak of. Not some human beings listening to words. But instead an energy that is to some palpable, that is, you can feel it in the air. You have energies like this. You call them things. You look upon situations and you feel compassion in your heart. The things that would bring a tear to your face tells you that something is going on in the mind in what you would call the heart the chemistry of the body responds to situations and if I could tell you that there is a situation here right now that is one of those I would also tell you that if we had a face you'd see the tear run down ours as well for it puts us together through this meld even of my partner in a way that is difficult for you to do alone it requires the group it requires their intent their purity of thought their willingness to believe and that energy is put together for the now which means that Whoever listens or reads participates in the entangled emotion of the moment. And they will feel it and know it is true. And again we tell you that this particular energy is one that is fine-tuned to the old soul. There would be those who would read and listen, who will feel nothing, who may even think that all of this is foolishness. And yet another one will have the same experience in 3D, listening or reading, and have a healing. That all the cells in their body would relate to the message and the very essence of God that they are will meet the essence that we are and there will be a handshake an agreement a revelation epiphany and we'll both end up with tears if you were ever to ask the question God what is it you want from me my side of the veil would overwhelmingly and resoundingly say I want you to know who you are I want you to know me because we are allied together you and I human being with an energy which has come from long ago through a complex process And you have to remember it. For the secret and the key to balance peace and the various things we have been discussing for the human being, the actual key requires that you start to remember what has happened in the system. Now in this room, in what you would call the now, 
on board this vessel are Lemurians. They have found their way to this room from all over the world to participate for a moment or two in truth. And so I put the energy of remembering on you. There is strength in intent of numbers and when there are more giving pure intent the energy becomes clearer. There is no great and grand message beyond the obvious today where you sit in the shadow of the mountain of Lemuria and as the vessel gets underway and starts to steam to the other end of the mountain no matter how far it gets from shore it is still over the mountain for directly below you as you move forward are your former homes <clears throat> for none of you lived upon that which you see as the islands and again we give you some history so that again you will hear it you can't hear it too many times that this chain of islands was not always islands and you did not have to go back geologically for millions of years literally only 200,000 will give you the attribute that we speak of and geologists will laugh for a while for this is a hot spot Hot spots on the earth are known by geologists for what they represent. A tremendous pressure of magma upon the crust of the earth, both under the sea and above the sea, they act the same. The crust of the earth moves over them and they push up and sometimes the magma finds channels and you have then volcanoes that build land sometimes they simply push and that which is the crust of the earth then will contain a bulge and whatever is above it is pushed up as well Oftentimes a hot spot creates both of these situations and this is one. And so again we tell you that the mountain of Hawaii, which was not called Hawaii or Lemuria at the time, is one unit. The largest mountain on the planet, enormous. And the hot spot, the pressure under it, built this mountain through volcanic action. And it did so for millions of years. But there came a time as the crust of the earth moved over the hot spot that the crust would become clogged. That is to say, the channels that built the volcanoes would temporarily, for several thousand years, become closed. And the result was a bubble, a bulge. And the entire mountain was then pushed up until it could be released through another volcano. And this is where you come in. For this is how you knew the mountain. For 80% of this mountain was above the water, not all of it. The mountain, because of its size and its height, is very heavy. Not all of it was pushed up. In fact, it was not even pushed up in a linear fashion. The heights 
of the mountains today were not the heights of them them in proportion to one another. They sagged in the middle because of the weight. So what happened, dear ones, to your home? Your homes were contained on the side of the mountain where it was not cold. Science will eventually find the glacier marks on the tops of these islands and they will know that at one point in time they were far higher than they are now. They will find evidence of altitude they cannot explain except for one explanation and that is they were pushed up. And here you are, in the same place you were. And so I will shorten the history just by telling you that two things occurred that were very frightening to the Lemurian. When the hot spot started to subside, it was slow, as geology is. It took a long time for it to subside back to the area it is now. But as a Lemurian, used to having one mountain watching the water come up slowly, you had no idea what was happening. It could have covered you completely. You did not know you would end up with islands. And you had to leave, and you did. If you listen to the modern story of the beginning of humanity on the Hawaiian Islands, it starts less than 3,000 years ago. Populated by others coming to these islands. That's modern history, not ancient history. It does not go back far enough for geologists and sociologists cannot fathom the truth of what took place here, for they've never seen it. Do you understand that your homes will never be found? There are many reasons. Although Lemuria was large and contained at one time up to 50,000 souls, they'll never find evidence of it. When the bulge began to collapse, it did not do so in a linear fashion. Therefore, parts of the mountain covered other parts of the mountain like a giant earthquake that was mountain specific. The mountain collapsed in certain ways, not linear. It did not get pushed up as one thing and pulled down as one thing. Geology doesn't work that way, weights and balances. Not only that, but part of the release was the magma coming out of one of the volcanoes. The one you see here now. Maui was also involved and parts of the peaks even collapsed where well, they were even larger than they are now. All of these things, dear ones, were the signal for you to leave. It was the end of Lemuria and it was the beginning of your work on the planet. And you left. Some of you did not make it some of you did, most of you did. Well, the currents are friendly and they took you to land. Some of you ended up in the southern hemisphere and some of you did not. But that is when you became seafaring and there was time for escape and you did. Lemuria was special, designed and implemented to be that place where souls pass through for the first time and receive the purest DNA you've ever seen on the planet. And that is the message for tonight. The Lemurian carries a specific attribute that most other human beings do not, no matter how old they are. You went through the pure race. You went through that which we would call the population center of divinity. And you received a pure imprint that others did not. 
We've spoken over and over of those who seated you. And we haven't given you much information. Except that they came from the other stars that you would call the Pleiadians. We did not even give you their planetary name. We give you no hints at all of their solar system, of the stars that connect them energetically. For we want this all to be something that they will give you when they come back. But they carry the energy of the seven, which is divine. They carry the compassion of the mother, which is female. And this was the teaching in this very place. And here is something you should know. I stayed a very long time. They did not come and seed and leave. And we have given you this information before. Like the other places on the planet. In a quantum way they remained. And some of them never left. Now. One of them visited you yesterday. <laughs> Just for a moment. This is for those in the room to hear. One of them visited you yesterday. Just for a moment. Took the form of a small white bird. A sign that said we're here. And we always will be. And some of you felt it. And you met the brother and, and the sisters that your DNA knows so well. Dear ones, there were not that many Lemurians. I would venture to give you a number. If you projected the amount of years that you did not reincarnate and multiply it by the number of generations plus those population who were here, you'll come to approximately 30 million. That's how many passed through in the thousands of years. That means that's how many Lemurians there are on earth right now. It's a much less than the one half of one percent we have told you about of the earth that must awaken. The rest of them are other old souls but not Lemurians. Now, what does that mean the Lemurian has that other old souls might not? And you might ask this, you might say, well, we may have it easier. Because we got the pure information. They got the pure information also. So what's the difference between you and them? The answer is you only got it once. <laughs> and then you moved on. But you were in a society that lived it. You got to experience it. Some of you even met the ones whose names are not pronounceable. You sat in front of the teachers from another star system. In your Akash, you can see their face. You knew them better than anyone else. And that etches itself right into your Akash and stays there, dear ones. You know what they looked like. It changes who you are. And now we tell you the task of the Lemurian is to reawaken to the DNA that you had here under the shadow of the mountain. To recalibrate that which is the DNA you have now to that which you had in the Akash. And because the Akash is multidimensionally stored in the DNA, it means that it is available instantly, that years make no difference, that the thousands of years and the generations that you have been and the lives that you have been are meaningless in a linear way. You don't have to dig down deep to find the Lemurian that you are. It lays there in its divinity looking at you. 
that the faces of the sisters are there for you to observe again in that which you would call your intuitive power. And you can feel that which is the purity that you received in this place that you are now. And so the gauntlet is thrown to you, Lemurian, because these 80 million who are all here on the earth right now have to do more than the rest because they have the memory and the rest do not. It brings you in mass to an awakening and a recalibration. Sometimes it makes you feel unworthy because of the task in front of you. Sometimes it makes you feel sick because of what is before you. It fogs the mind and the imagination because you can't quite understand it or figure it out. But that's why you came. There will be Lemurians, even those in the room, who don't want to go to this place and won't. There is no mandate that supersedes free choice. It says just because you're here and just because you're a Lemurian means you have to do this. And you'll hear it. And you may or may not act upon it compassionately or fully. And I'm telling you that you have time and there's no judgment in this for a Lemurian is always a Lemurian today and tomorrow and for the life of the planet and some of you will take the gauntlet and awaken now and work with it and your lives will change and some of you won't no judgment only information that tells you should you choose to open yourselves to the potential of your Akash this will happen sooner than later And the masters that showed you what it looked like to have DNA which operated at a higher level will actually then come into your life and show you how to make yours begin to do the same again. This is the attribute of awakening to a quantum reality, a multidimensional attribute of humanity that is seen and felt this is what it's like you have help you have help in a multi-dimensional way you do not have to do this yourselves except to begin it intent is like an outreached hand to God it's like you reaching for that higher self which vibrates higher than you do because it's multidimensional and you are less than that. And the outreached hand is your pure intent saying, Dear Spirit, this is the hour. Under the shadow of the mountain I take that which is the mantle of my responsibility to Gaia. And I give permission to meld to that which I said I could be and you would say well that's hardly specific crime <laughs> and that is the secret don't make up your mind what it means well the invitation is to shift in an appropriate way and start a process through this lifetime and the next and the next which will rework your DNA to a higher percentage of efficiency and each lifetime means longer life we've said it before dear ones you will awaken in the next lifetime with intuition of who you are never having to work through the issues you did this lifetime. 
You might say you would awaken to spirit. There are those in the room who had this happen this time. It changes what you'll do. It makes you wiser. As you begin to take the very elements that were created in the shadow of the mountain that is next to you. Use this energy in these days. I speak to those in the room. Use this energy. For when you leave this place, you lose part of a catalyst. The catalyst is actually your energy mingled into your energy. Your Akash remembers this place. The crystalline grid that you helped to set remembers you. It resounds to the soul that you are. And between the two of you, an agreement is set. It helps your healing, dear ones. Situationally, it helps the wisdom that you have to work with the puzzles of 3D. Emotionally, it gives you the compassion to walk through life with a different perception of what is around you. And eventually, it gives you the Lemurian mind. If I could take you into the future, you're going to see a number of generations and you're going to start to see something that no one expected, a special group of human beings who think differently. And civilization will see them as the wise ones. I speak now of what happened to the Pleiadians and the ones before them. And those will become the leaders. And humans will look to them and see that they are wiser. And I will tell you who they are. For their homes are underneath the ship. <laughs> I want you to go from this place with perhaps a different perception than you came. And now for the listener and for the reader, you are not excluded for the eyes and the ears that would come to this particular message are drawn here synchronistically because your home is also under the ship. That is who is awakening to these messages and will be touched by them. It's a homecoming. It's physical, it's compassionate, it's a mental, it's emotional. It involves the entire print. And you will change because of it. These are the things we have told you about. And finally, do not pay attention to the things that happen on this planet with the old energy, for they are trying very, very hard to pull it right back to the old prophecies. They want a war so badly. <laughs> for they understand that war creates a good economy quickly. And if they achieve that goal, it won't be for long. For the ball rolls forward now. It can't be stopped easily. The free choice potential of this planet has been set. More of you want peace than not. And that's all it takes. You have begun a higher consciousness slide into a place that eventually will see no war at all. And this is what we see in this moment. And so it is. <laughs>